This is the way. This is the way. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're excited about Mother's Day. How many mothers do we have in the building on today? All the mothers stand up on your feet. Let us salute you. Amen. And tell you how valuable you are. Come on, put those hands together and celebrate these mothers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A lot of amen. The mothers are missing here today because they have gone to go and sit in ministry at their mother's church. Come on, let's give them a hand clap even though they're not here. Amen. 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 I tell you, there's nothing like a mother. Notice that I'm saying mother, not woman. Amen. There's people who are having babies, but they're not mothers. But it's so good and so awesome to have, amen, a mother in our midst. When you have a mother, she's unique. She's awesome. She's powerful. Amen. She's not, amen, the stranger walking up and down the street. Amen. She is so significant to Christ. And today I'm going to make my feeble attempt. Notice what I said, a feeble attempt to express to you what a mother is in the eyesight of God. Did you hear what I said? I said, I want to make a feeble attempt to express to you the value of what you mean to God. Amen. I notice I didn't say to people, but to God. You are so unique. You are so awesome. You're so powerful and so loved by him that it will blow your mind to understand how important you are. A lot of times the enemy comes to devalue, amen, human beings, and especially when it comes to women. Even in foreign countries, they, amen, abused the woman. Amen. They try to devalue, and your value is no more than what a cattle would be. But I'm here to remind you, don't get caught up in man's opinion about your value. I wish you could reach over to another mother and tell them how valuable you are. Men, if there's not enough of them around them, let them know how valuable they are. You are so valuable and such a threat that the enemy is doing everything in his power to stop who you are. Amen. That's why so many young girls are being destroyed even be before they come into the full knowledge of their capabilities because they do not understand how valuable they are. You are a potential threat to the kingdom of darkness and the enemy wants to try to do everything he can to stop you from knowing who you are. Uh, can I get an amen in here? Amen. amen. I am amazed as to how our Lord values a mother. Because they have such an awesome, somebody say awesome. awesome. They have an awesome responsibility in the structure of the future of our culture. Did you hear what I said? You have an awesome responsibility of the future, amen, of our culture. And because of this powerful position called motherhood, somebody say motherhood. This somebody say it's a powerful position. It's a it's so it's so pop listen, it's so powerful that God said, I can't entrust this to a man. Are y'all gonna catch what I'm saying? God says a man does not have the capability of what I've instilled in a mother, I can't leave it to him. So he says, amen, I've designed a woman who will be able to have the capability of carrying out what's in my heart. Oh, y'all gonna talk to me after a while. Motherhood is such a powerful position, amen, and therefore God has a divine intervention on your behalf that he doesn't have on a man's behalf. Uh, I wish I could get some praise from the women in the building. Ah, uh, come on, look at, your, look at your neighbor and tell neighbor. Amen. The pastor's talking about the women today, and you are valuable. Uh, listen, 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 listen to this. Listen to this innate 
power of endurance. Somebody say innate power of endurance. See, if a man had a child, that would be the last child he ever had. Because we do not have what you have. God instilled inside a woman an endurance that is so incredible that they will go through the birthing pains to have a child and turn around and have another. Come on, somebody. You let a man have one child and that will be the end. It will probably not even be in the process because he'll stop in the middle. Y'all going to talk to me after a while. Huh? They say, Mother, breathe. The man will start, start holding his breath because the pain is just too incredible. So there is an endurance that God has given to the woman that men cannot even begin to imagine. I believe that God, amen, allowed, amen, the association of giving birth, amen, with the revelation of Jesus on the cross. Oh, y'all going to talk to me. We could not be birthed into the kingdom without him having the pains to deliver us. Oh, I wish I could get somebody to talk to me just for a second. You are, oh, could you hear the mother right now? and said, look how important you are. Look how important. Yeah, please. Look how important you are as a mother. Don't you ever look down on, amen, who you are. Because you have allowed, amen, a seed to grow in your womb. Woo! Look at this. Look at this. It is so powerful that Jesus gives us the revelation of you having birth with him dying on the cross. Because he had to endure such contradiction against himself. He had to go through all that pain. Oh, yeah, I wish I could get some. Listen to what he says in Genesis 3 and 16. He said, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow. Somebody say in sorrow. Yeah. Jesus had that same type of sorrow when he knew that his hour had come. Woo! Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Amen. A woman, when she knows her hour is about to come, she dreads it. But my, 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 my. Jesus knew his hour was about to come, but he knew that when he died, there was going to be a birthing. Oh, come on, come on, did you hear? Listen to what he says, amen. I'm going to multiply your sorrow it, that thou bringeth forth what? Children. Somebody say, the sorrow, but the children. And thy desire shall be upon thine husband, and he shall rule over thee. There's a passion, amen, because of the fact that you have to understand, even though you give birth, understand your position, amen. And when you understand your position in the category of God's design, you will start designing future culture. Oh, come on, somebody. Listen to what Romans 5 and 6 says. He said, for when we were yet without strength. Amen. Sometimes being a mother, you are yet without strength. You don't know what to do. The man sometimes will leave. You're left alone to raise a child by your... But yet God will give you the strength. Oh, come on. Can you high five somebody and say, God will stand with you. Amen. No matter what you're going through, God will stand with you. Listen to what it says. Amen. The Romans, amen, 5 and 6, he says, listen, for when we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. What do you mean, preacher? In the impartation, in visitation of the Holy Ghost, when you are in that birthing position to bring forth a child, you stand between life and you stand between death. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, you wouldn't have the power to push. He gives you the power to push in spite of the pain. Oh, come on, tell somebody, in spite of the pain. Uh-huh, in spite of the pain, you know that deliverance is at hand. Listen, when life bears down on a mother, amen, God the Father stands to do warfare against their enemy because God has a plan for mothers. Somebody say plan for mothers. God, can you look at a mother right now and say, God got a plan for you. God got a plan for you. Why? Because you've been entrusted 
with a life that depends on you. See, catch the revelation. God has to do something special in your life because he has allowed you to bring birth of life into the planet. And if you acknowledge him, he's going to acknowledge you. And when he acknowledges you, he's going to acknowledge that which you have brought forth. Because the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Oh, you ought to touch somebody. You'll tell a mother right now, I don't care where your children are today. I don't care what they're going through today. Let not your heart be troubled. Woo! Let not your heart be troubled. Why? Because God, amen, has a special plan for mothers. I want to talk about the heart of a mother. I want you to see how valuable you are to God. But the heart of a mother. See, when a mother, see, I ain't talking about a girl having babies. I'm talking about a mother having babies. Amen. They understand, a mother, somebody say a real mother. A real mother understands her sacrifice. Let me say that again. A real mother understands her sacrifice. Did you understand what I just said? Sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. If there's a sacrifice, that means that something has to die. Huh? See, when a, re a real mother, somebody say a real mother. A real mother will die to her own passion to make sure that her child is okay. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about real mother. I ain't talking about these here playmates. I'm talking about real mothers. A real mother will do whatever it takes to strive lawfully to make sure her child is protected, provided for, and whatever she needs. Why? Or he needs. Why? Because you are the God to the child you brought into the world. And God will stand with you. If you acknowledge him, he will stand with you. When Hagar ran from, amen, Sarah, she was out there in the desert. But guess what? God was right there. Come on, look at another mother and say, I don't care what kind of desert you go through. The Lord is going to be with you. I don't care what kind of pain you got to deal with. The Lord will be right there with you. I don't care what you had to embrace. God will stand right there with you. When you feel like giving up, God will stand right there with you. Why? Because you have something that he gave you from heaven. The value, you're so valuable. Your womb has been blessed to create a human life. What are you talking about, preacher? Listen to how valuable. Listen, listen to the, I, 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 I want y'all to embrace this revelation as God gave it to me. How much of a sacrifice it takes some time being a mother. You say, well, pastor, how could you define it so well? You don't know. You're not a mother. But see, when the Holy Ghost, see, when the Holy Ghost gives you a revelation, he doesn't care what gender you are to give a point to somebody who needs it. Somebody out here this morning needs to be encouraged as a mother. Listen, listen to Exodus. Exodus chapter 2, verse 9. And the Bible says, and Pharaoh's daughter said unto Moses' sister, take this child away. Now, see, you need to understand there was an edict that was passed that every male child would be killed because the king was afraid. The king was afraid of the seed that was coming. That's why, amen, mothers who have Men childs or boy children have to really be on their guard because the enemy wants to stop that young boy from becoming a prince, from becoming a king, and becoming a ruler. Anybody going to hear the Holy Ghost today? That's why there's so many things that are geared against the man because he knows that the man is going to be something special in the kingdom. Whew. Yes, I'm the only one excited because I'm sure excited. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen. He said, listen. He says to, she says to Moses' sister, take the child away. And 
I want you to give him to his mother. Somebody say his mother. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This was an illegal adoption. <laughs> this was an illegal adoption. But just because you've been adopted don't mean that God ain't in it. Oh, I wish I could... I wish I can talk for all the adopted children. See, I, I grew up in a foster home myself. Never knew one day I would be a preacher. Never knew that I would become somebody. Why? Because I was taught to be a nobody but God. I wish I could talk to somebody whose heart has been crushed because you weren't in your family. You weren't with your mother and father. You were all by yourself in a strange land. But God still sees your value. Woo! Boy, you preaching here. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Took him from his mother because she had to do what was needed to protect him. So she creates a basket, puts him in the basket, and causes it to float downstream. And God's divine providence. Oh, I wish you could look at somebody and say right now. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. God has your back because he's working behind the scenes. You wish you could see everything he's doing, but your only responsibility is to serve the Lord with gladness. And as you give him praise over your life, he'll work your tomorrow out and increase your to Listen to this. Listen to this. So she had to give up her child how many know that wasn't an easy thing? To give up your precious child. Not only that, he was the baby of the family. And yet she had to give up what she loved most to protect him. Even though it cost her her joy to give her child away. But look at the providence of God. Her sacrifice did not go unnoticed, and God orchestrated it that she was able to embrace her baby again. Oh, y'all. But look at the sacrifice. The Bible says she told Moses' sister to take the child and let the nurse nurse him, and you will get paid for nursing your own child. God can, I mean, he's just so awesome. Ah, uh, come on, you look at another mother and say, mother, come on, look at a mother. It might not be another mother. You might be a guy talking to the mother, so you make it right. Mother, no matter what you give up, God got some wages coming in your life because he recognized your sacrifice. Because he recognized your sacrifice. I know it ain't been easy. I know it ain't been fair. Sometimes you might feel alone, but God says, I keep good records. I'm going to give you a payday. Oh, man. I'm going to give you a payday. He said, listen here, I will give you wages. And the woman took her own child back and began to nurse it. And the child, somebody say, and the child grew up with a mother's love. I need to say this. I don't care about babysitters. I don't care about youth programs. I don't care about all these activities they got for babies and children away from the house. But let me tell you something. There's nothing more powerful than a love of a mother towards their child. I wish you'd just tell a mother right now there's no substitute for you. Amen. They can, amen, give the child gifts. They can take them around the world. They can go hither and thither. But guess what? In the heart of the child, I still want my mama. Oh, I wish I could get a praise in the building right now. I still want my mother. Listen to this. Listen to this. And she brought him up, amen, unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. Look at this. What had you had to deny yourself to make sure your baby's okay? Whew. How many 
tears have you cried as a mother? Because sometimes you didn't know what to do. How many times have you went in warfare because you needed to pray your own self through because you were making sacrifices you couldn't do? Oh, I wish I could get a praise in the building. Oh, you high five a lady right now and say, you got it, you got it, you got it. How valuable. I come to remind a mother right now, I know sometimes them babies can get on your last nerve. I know sometimes you wish, come on now, I got to say it because it's true. You wish you had not done some things, but guess what? God's going to improve what you go through because he's going to give you a reward and there's a payday coming. So she had to give up the very thing she loved to protect him from the onslaught of the enemy. And Pharaoh's daughter raised Moses. And she called his name Moses because he was drawn from the water. I want somebody to holler out my, my child's name. Come on, just say it with me in the spirit. My child's name is called victory. My child's name is overcomer. My child's name is a winner. My child's name is victorious. My name... We could not see what Moses was going to be. You can't see what that child's going to be. You can't see what that daughter's going to be. But guess what you can do? Be everything they should be right before their eyes. Because see, a mother, I said a mother, you ain't going out drinking with your child. You ain't going out there getting high with your child. Because that's not a heart of a mother. But a... That's right. Be. Make me feel like I'm preaching. Look at this now. You got to understand, do you really understand uh -huh, the word sacrifice here? Whatever I need for my child, I'm going to do it lawfully, but I'm going to see the welfare of my child that he or she will always be all right. Will always be all right. Men come and go, but that child, because they are still innocent, God will grace you. As you continue to seek him, I can do all things through Christ who does what? Strengthen. Because sometimes you're without strength. And when you, you, because you seek Christ, he will give you strength that you don't even possess yourself. You'll wonder, how did I make it over? How did I get through this? How did I handle that storm? How did I keep the family together? How did I keep praying? It's because I can do all things through Christ. Come on, tell that woman you can do it. You can do it. He's given you a strength beyond your ability. He, let me say that again. He has given you a strength beyond your ability. Why? Because when it's all said and done, you'll say it wasn't me. It was the grace of God. I couldn't have held on if God hadn't kept me. Oh, I wish I could get a praise from somebody. I wouldn't be able to be here now if God didn't stand in my lonely hour. Well, I feel like preaching this thing. The value of a woman. Why are you so valuable? Can I tell you why? Oh, man. Robin, don't hit that note because I, I, I feel this thing. Why are you so valuable? I'm glad you asked me. Why, Pastor? It is because Satan used you. Satan used you, and he thought he won. But I'm so glad that God don't hold me captive to my mistakes. Oh, come on. Can you hear a woman right now and tell her, I'm so glad that God don't hold us to our mistakes. Satan began to rejoice. Satan began to have a party. But in the midst of his party, God turns around and said, because the enemy used you, I'm going to turn it around and use you myself. Oh, I wish I could hear somebody. I wish I could hear the women say something to me. 
Ah, come on, somebody. He said, because the enemy tricked you, because he took advantage of you, because he used your emotion, I'm going to turn around and use your strength. I'm going to put power in your womb. I'm going to put hope in your womb. I'm going to put future in your womb. I'm going to, oh, 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 oh. Ah, y'all going to hear the Holy Ghost after a while. Listen to what he says in Genesis 3.15. The Bible says, mm -hmm, because the enemy used you, God said, I'm going to turn around and use the very thing that the enemy tricked you up on. What do you mean? Listen to what he said. God says, hey, man, because this thing happened, I'm going to put enmity between you and that serpent. Huh? He said, and between your seed and her seed. And guess what? Your seed is going to bruise his head. Uh-huh. And he is going to make the attempt to bruise your heel. But guess what? You keep bruising his head. Keep on. When, when it look like your children are going astray, keep bruising his head. When it look like they ain't doing right, keep bruising his head. He'll bruise a little bit of their life, but guess what? You'll keep knocking him upside his head. You'll keep telling the devil, you will not have this child. You will not have victory over this child because I already named that baby. I named him victory. I named him success. I named him overcomer. I named him royal. I named him anointed. I named him, I named him, I named him, and I named him. Woo! I named him because I know what God said. I named them because I'm going to be an example to that which they see. And if they see that, I don't quit. Oh, I wish I could talk to some mother out here today. Because my child didn't see me quit. My child going to stand up in the midst of adversity and say, my mother did it. I know I can do it. Oh, I wish I could talk to a mother right now. Standing up in the midst of adversity. Because they seen their mother stand. Men are looking around for weak, soft women. You don't need no weak woman. You need somebody that's going to partnership with you and make you greater than you could be by yourself. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Let me get to this. Look at this. And so he said, I'm going to do something. And he says, Timothy, in 1 Timothy 5, 14, the Bible says, I will therefore, I will, I will, I pray, I pray, I'm believing, I'm believing, uh -huh. therefore, that the younger women marry mm, and bear children and be guides of the home uh -huh, and give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachably. In other words, that's what happened in the garden. And he said, I want to make sure you never allow the enemy to trick you again. The Bible says we're not ignorant to Satan's devices. In other words, you know that when you hit lonely bar, he'll make somebody seem to be more important than your child. Ah, sometimes that child will get on your nerve and you'll regret the day you had him, but you got to fight that spirit off. You got to still name that child what you believe he's going to become. I wish I could talk to a mother today. Listen to this. He said, listen here. He goes around and Paul says to Titus in 2 and 4, he said, listen here, that they may teach the younger women to be sober, to, be, to love their husbands, and do what? To love their children. Why? Because I said it before, there's no greater love than a heart of a mother, the love of a mother. Amen. Mothers are so valuable to the making of the culture. I, don't, I can't stress that enough. You help design the culture. If your child sees you loose, that child more than ever is going to be loose also. You have a greater impression on your child than the father. You have a greater touch than the father. What are you talking about? Teach them how to work at home because you are so anointed that your home will become what you are. Let me say it again. Your home will become 
what you are. Why? A man will buy a house, but you got to make it a home. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. A man can't make it a home, but a mother. I want you to teach him how to be a nurturer. I want you to teach him how to love. I want you to teach him how to be sensitive. You don't need no daughter out trying to play football, running out there with men. You need to teach them how to be tender and soft because the man that God is preparing for them needs. The culture, the culture, the culture. The culture, the culture, the culture. You as a mother must set the precedent, amen, to point that daughter, amen, into an avenue of learning how valuable they are. Don't let no boy come and tell them how pretty they are. Let that boy understand that when he tells her, baby, you look good, that child ought to say, I know, because my parents tell me that all the time. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Woo! Give me five more minutes. Listen to this. Mothers are such a threat. I want you to coin that in your spirit. Mothers are such a threat to Satan that he is now trying to redefine the family. Let me say it again. Look at a woman and say, woman, if only you knew how valuable you are. That's why he'll try to trip you up on your nature. Try to get you interested in other women. Huh? And burn in your lust. Huh? To where you depart from the natural use of your body. Because why? Because he knows if he can get you twisted, he has now infiltrated the culture. But, but because you are a woman of God, because you know the word of God, because you refuse to bow down to this false culture, you become the woman to teach your daughters and tell them you are somebody. Can I get a praise in the building? Amen. He's trying to redefine the family. He is so mad with you, he has now come and attacked the church to redefine, amen, the difference between a pastor and his first lady. He's now talking about a pastor and his first man, amen. And now he's trying to switch it up even more and talk about now the pastor and first gentleman. I'm telling you that the devil is trying to attack the woman because he is afraid of you. Why don't you hit a woman right now and say, child, let me tell you how awesome you are. Let me tell you how valuable you are. You are a threat. That's why the enemy will try to come and mess with your emotions, make you feel like you by yourself. But I'm here to tell a woman today, you are somebody. Oh, you are anointed. You got power, and the enemy is scared of you. Woo! Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So afraid of you that the midwives had to intervene. The devil wanted to kill your children. But my God, the midwives came in the middle of the night and said, we can't do nothing to these women. They ain't like other women. They're not like the world. They got a special anointing. And we can't kill their boys. We can't. Oh. The value of a woman. What are you talking about, preacher? Because you are so valuable. That is the reason for the husband. <laughs> you are so valuable. That's why it's so important that you understand your position as a husband. <sighs> I'm talking to you men now. You might not have been before you got here what you ought to be. But I'm here to tell you that you've got to protect the value of the woman that God has given you. Because she is so potentially dangerous that she can make you what you could never imagine. That's why you got to guard and protect her. you got to watch out for her. 
You got to deny yourself sometimes. Just like she had to deny that child, you got to deny yourself to watch over that which God has graced you with. Oh, I wish I could get some women to back me up. Uh huh. You can't just because you've been with her a while. Don't look like she's not important. Don't think she's not valuable because you do not want your prayers to be hindered. You wonder why you can't get a breakthrough. You better guard and protect that. What are you talking about, preacher? The Bible says, uh huh. 1 Peter 3 and 7. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. What knowledge is that? Understanding that the woman, amen, is about to build an army for God. And the enemy knows that she must become the target to stop the procreation of the army that's being produced. How about you didn't say, man, that boy is preaching today. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen to this. The woman who can build an army is Satan's target. And the understanding that we as husbands, amen, we got to get the revelation. She cannot do this warfare on her own. And he, come on, look at this. I'll never forget one time a, a, a spirit came in my house. This is when we were living in Newark, New Jersey. And this big black spirit, and I could only see the image of who he was. But he was huge. And he said, I'm coming to take your wife. And, and, and I said, no, you ain't taking my wife. And I grabbed him and I punched him. And I knocked him across the bed. And I jumped out the bed and I jumped in on top of him. And his head was halfway in the closet and halfway out in the room. And I went to go hit him again. And the Holy Ghost said, plead the blood. And I plead the blood and he disappeared. What are you talking about, preacher? A husband's job is to protect his spouse. I, 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 I got to say it again. The responsibility of the husband is to guard that potential threat against the enemy and his culture. Because that woman is so valuable that he's coming to attack her. He'll attack her in her emotions. He'll attack her with thinking she's not worthy. She'll attack and make she feel lonely. But you got to... You got to show, come on now, uh, these last few months, I've been really focusing in on trying to be what my wife wants me to be. It's not easy sometimes because they, you know, sometimes don't even really know all that they do want. But I'm learning that I've got to understand something. Her potential for me in my life is to help me get to where I'm going. So I've got to guard her against every enemy that will try to come and hinder her and destroy her and defeat her. I don't understand it all, but I'm going to do my best. Why? Because she is a threat. How valuable they are. Peter goes on to say, not only that, with knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto a weaker vessel. Unto a weaker vessel. I know that women are emotion, emotional, but I got to protect them against themselves sometimes. Baby, listen to me, men. Tell your wife, baby, you are never alone. Not as long as I got breath in my body. You just tell me what you need me to do. I sent a text out with you talking about uh, Sinbad. And they said, well, I, I just want, I just want a, a affection or something. He, he said, what? What you want me to do? Build a closet? What are you doing? Tell me what you want. I, I just want to be loved. Tell me how I can love you. Don't leave it to a... I'm talking to, this, uh, I'm talking to mothers. I'm talking to husbands. What? Tell that man how to love you. We don't know what you want. You leaving it up to us. If you're going to leave it up to us, God would have never made you because we needed somebody to help us. 
Or you'll catch that three. You'll catch that three o'clock in the morning. Your wife in here today, you ought to tell her, I need you. I need you. Don't say it because the preacher said it. Say it because you mean it. Listen to what he says. Giving honor. How do I give honor? I protect her. I'm not going to let her feel discouraged. I'm not going to let her feel overwhelmed. I'm not going to let her feel alone. You trying to be Don Juan and looking all sad fair to everybody out in the street except your own. The devil got you fooled. Because guess what? When you get sick and on your deathbed, when you get sick and can't do for yourself, that woman out there and them folk out there in the street ain't going to come by and wipe your hind parts. You are valuable. Woman, don't you ever degrade yourself and settle. You're too valuable for that. I got two minutes left. Listen to what he says. My God, I'm, so, I'm sorry that the mothers of our church ain't here. But look at it. Mothers, mothers, raise your hand if you're a mother. I'm talking to you, mothers. I'm talking to you. You ready to hear what the Lord got to say to you? If you're ready to hear what the Lord got to say to you, clap your hands right now. If you're ready for what God got to say to you. Listen to what mothers be encouraged to hold on to Jesus' promise. A great outcome is coming. What are you talking about, preacher? John 16, 21. John 16, 21. Listen to what it says. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow. The pains you sometimes feel is not yours. I hear this in the whole. I hear it. Hit me a real good note right there. Ah, yeah, that's it. The pains you feel, is it, are you women listening to me? I, I hear the Holy Ghost. The pain you feel is you going ahead of your child in the future and you fighting demons in advance. Boy, I thought I'd get a hallelujah. You are fighting battles that have not yet came because the enemy is fighting them to get to you to give up on them. But because you are feeling sorrows and pain, you fighting their tomorrow even before they get there. Oh, give the Lord a good hand clap. Listen to this. Listen to this. And it says, travail and sorrow because her hour is come. Because her hour is come. Don't that sound like Jesus? Don't, don't that sound just like Jesus? He said, woman, don't bother me because my hour has not come. And then he said, I was created for this very hour. Listen to what he says. He says, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the earth. Listen to verse 22. And ye know, ye now, therefore, have sorrow. Ah, uh, come on now. Come on. How many know? I was looking at one of these mothers, and they were running around with one of their child children, and I said, "My God, no wonder God give young people the ability to have children, because when you get in your sixties, you can't be running around with these little kids." Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Listen to this. Listen to this. And it says here. Listen. He said, "You're going through right now." I wish I could talk to a mother who's really struggling, and 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 and, and there ain't nothing wrong with it. Parenting is difficult. Huh? And especially if you are a single mother. It is hard. It's tough. And sometimes you wonder, am I going to make it? But listen to what the Lord said. Notice I said the Lord said. Not Kenny Anderson. The Lord said. Listen to what he said. He said, and now ye therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. I will see you again. And listen to what he says. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Now that's enough to give God a praise right there. Yeah. Hit that mother and say, joy is coming. Yeah. Come on and tell him again, joy. And your joy and your sorrow won't compare to the joy that God has already prepared for you mothers. Yeah. 
Oh, My God, tears running down your face. But God said, I'm coming back again. Weeping may endure for a night. Because sometimes you are on your bed at midnight. Sometimes you're struggling in your flesh. But I'm here to tell you, God said, I'm coming back. Ah, look at your mother right there on the side. said, he's coming back. And guess what? When he comes back, he's going to give you an anointing that when that deliverance of that child breaks through in their life, you're going to forget about all what you went through, how you had to put beans together and didn't have no meat. You're going to remember when it was struggling time, but you ain't going to worry about it no more because when God comes again, Oh, Lord. Listen to this, and this is my last scripture. Listen to this, and this is an anchor to it all. Romans 8 and 18. The Bible says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. He's not going to reveal it on the outside. Because your outside might not compare to what he's going to do on the inside. And he said, listen here, for the earnest expectation of the creatures are work waiting or waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. See how you design a culture? See how awesome you are? I made my feeble attempt today to encourage some mother somewhere. Don't give up. Don't you call your child hard-headed. Call them champion. That's just that champion spirit. They want to give them a title called D-H-E, you know, all of them, those alphabet numbers. You say, not my child. My child just needs to be able to have activity somewhere. You done closed up all the schools and the after-school activities that they don't know what to do now with that energy. So when they come in your presence, they got unused energy with your old self. And you can't keep up with them, so you want to drug them up and make them docile. But you as a mother say, don't you do that with my child. Because if I got to grab my child and we run the track together, we going to get it to where they'll understand they can use that energy. I'm looking at this baby right now. She got so much energy, she's jumping up and down on her daddy's leg. He can't tell her, stop it. Why? Because she just got some energy and he don't have no more. I wish I could get somebody to talk to me. They got energy. That's why you got to have a little playroom. I mean, until they get to the place where they understand. Then you smack their little legs and tell them to be still. But until then, you let them do what they got to do. I'm finished. Come on, give the Lord a good hand clap. Come here, mother. 